Windows Azure, with respect to all of its cloud computing capabilities, provides a number of online services to which you can subscribe. But almost any environment these days requires some kind of database, either to drive their applications or just to store data for data warehousing and mining purposes. But uh, SQL databases available through Windows Azure is simply known as SQL Azure services, and you absolutely can host your database platform within Windows Azure and access that like any other service. So we're going to have a quick look at here what you can do with that. We're in our Azure portal right here. And again, you see all items over here on the left. But of course, there's databases right there. So we just have to click on SQL databases. And this is a very, very impressive option, as you'll see in a second here. We're going to go ahead and set one up. And it is literally going to be available within seconds. So not only does it have that almost instant provisioning, but like all cloud-based services, the infrastructure that's required to maintain this database simply is no longer our responsibility. It's maintained by Microsoft at Windows Azure. So we can get started here with a SQL database quickly and easy, easily just by choosing Create a SQL Database. All we have to do is give it a name, and we'll just call it something standard, such as Test DB. You see we've got options on the addition here, web versus business, which is pretty much just the sizes. You see under web, we've got 1 gig or 5 gig. Under business, we've got 10 up to 150. So for our purposes here, we can just go with this. Standard collation options that you would have for any database, particularly if you're supporting multiple languages. And then you do have to have, of course, an actual server to be able to host this database. And since we don't have one yet, at the very same time that we're provisioning the database, we can provision a new server as well. So we just have to plug in our values there, hit next, and then just provide a login name. Every SQL instance does require a login name, and this pretty much matches uh, or equates to the SA login of SQL Server, but it won't actually let you use SA or administrator uh, in fact, if you click on the on the help option here, it gives you some ideas to what can and cannot be used. So you pretty much just want to go with a standard username here. And then, of course, supply your password. And as far as the region goes, these are the actual data centers that is available, that are available, sorry, in uh, in pretty much all over the world. So you can choose which one is probably closest to you, but it doesn't really matter. And we can just click on complete. So you see that is provisioning right now, creating, processing down here. Uh, this will literally only take seconds. So we'll see the database come up in a moment. Uh, there's the server name right there. And there we go. Our database is up and running. It is now able to be used. It's accessible not only through the Windows portal here, uh, but you can also access and manage this database through local applications such as Visual Studio uh, or SQL Server Management Studio. Now, you do have to set up some firewall and IP address and port configurations to make sure that that works, but you absolutely can do that. So again, it just tells you the status. It's online. There's the server. We can click on that right there and we can get some more information about that. We can create another database or we can manage the server. We can go to the dashboard here and see information about the server and its configuration. There's the name. There's the administrative login. There's the URL. And that string right there is actually what you would enter to make a connection uh, from one of your local applications. So all kinds of options there. You can reset the password as well. Again, we can go to the databases. We can choose configure. All kinds of options here that we can set up. And, and these are the values that you might want to put in if you are going to access this from, from a local application. So we can just create any kind of rule name, give the IP address, uh, a range of IP address if appropriate to allow external applications access to this.
But the point being for now is that we have the database, we have the server, everything has been provisioned, and it is ready to go. So we can uh, we can start making use of that pretty much right away as part of our subscription. And it's just a really great solution for doing your databases because not only is it provisioned that quickly and that easily, but again, all of the infrastructure, all of the management for the servers is all done for us. We don't have to do anything other than be concerned about the database. Along those lines, one of the main things that most environments are concerned with these days is high availability. The uh, the fact that if a server should go down, the database can still remain active. And one of the great features about SQL Azure, it automatically provisions three copies of the database for every Azure-based database. So as soon as you create that, there are, in fact, three servers hosting copies of that database. So high availability is built into all of your SQL Azure databases. And again, you don't really have to do anything in terms of managing that. It's there, they're maintained, and all of the Azure-based services uh, supply a 99.9% .9 service level agreement in terms of uptime. So instant provision, easy access, access not only through the portal, but through through local applications and built-in high availability. So some really nice features for SQL Azure-based services.